Time to play with some clay. Alright, I got an explanation for you of why this clay is still here and not at the foundry. I called the foundry this morning and they're closed till the 25th. They're considered a non-essential business, so the governor of the state of Montana has closed them down till then, which means all those wonderful people, those artists at the uh, foundry who make the foundry as great as it is, are out of work till then. So, I can't take this clay to the foundry, and I'm cleaning my lenses right now. But I'm going to start the armature for Crazy Horse today. I'm not going to show that. I have uh, an ex a, uh, instructional DVD on how to create armatures for uh, a dog and a horse as well as a human. It's a two, two, DV, two DVD set and uh, it's available uh, at a link uh, below this video. So, change of plans. Uh, I was going to take uh, the Statue of Christ to the foundry as well because that's ready to go to the uh, mold making. They've been working on two monumental sculptures, uh, making molds of them, and they asked me to hold off for a couple of weeks uh, before I took that over the uh, Statue of Christ to the foundry. And because of uh, this virus pandemic, uh, it's not going to happen until the 26th, hopefully. It could extend, they could extend it, I don't know. So anyway, I'll uh, make the armature tonight for uh, Crazy Horse. It's going to be a, well, I'm going to base it on my, uh, let me get it picked up here. This is uh, my maquette. And I'm going to base it on the size of this figure here because it's a good size for doing a face. I actually contacted the great grandson or the grandson of Chief Crazy Horse, and uh, and he basically uh, told me about a drawing that uh, was made uh, by someone back in the 1800s. Uh, I think it was 1800s. Uh, it was drawn by an artist, and uh, when you know, sitting down with you know, half sister of Crazy Horse, and when he drew it and came up with uh, the finished drawing, uh, she cried because she says that's him. I looked at the drawing, and that's what he suggested I go by. I looked at the drawing and it still had the basic features of both uh, Little Hawk and uh, William S. Hart, who was the uh, silent movie actor from the 1920s, I guess. Um, so I'm going to combine all three, the drawing and the two photographs, and try to come up with its face. There's just no way of knowing, uh, really. Well, I forgot that I had uh, a uh, true form armature, 24 inches tall, which just happens to be the almost the same height as uh, the gentleman here. I am missing a forearm. That's not really a big deal because uh, I can make another forearm with... Uh, some wire that I've got here. I don't need 
to have the, oh, the foam forearm. Uh, I brought a pan down about the same diameter as I want the base to be. So I'm going to take a magic marker, which I've got right here, and draw a circle for the base. Now I'm doing four uh, historical Native American figures and I want to keep all the bases the same diameter and the same thickness and all that. So I'm going to have to uh, work it within that uh, circle which is just fine. It works out just great. So tomorrow I'll start uh, getting this thing ready and uh, I want to get the distance between the uh, top of the hip and the bottom of the uh, rib cage to match that of the uh, maquette. Uh, the hip, the, this is a generic uh, armature and uh, I think when uh, the gentleman who designed this armature designed it. He designed it with uh, the fact that you can change it from a man to a woman uh, depending on what you want to do uh, because he includes the uh, size he includes the, the width of a or the size of a uh, female uh, set of hips and so what I do is I just trim down the hips a little bit and I can adjust that to match what I want for the male. They're too wide for a male figure so that's why I'm doing this. The width of the shoulders are a male's width, so that works out just fine. Um, I'll probably sculpt the skull um, from scratch, although this skull would work. I mean, he is subtracted for clay and all that stuff, so it's not quite the same size as this. Uh, skull on this uh, maquette but uh, hmm that's interesting the uh, turntable came off <laughs> anyway for the price you pay for you expect the damn turntable to stay on and that works out perfectly for the uh, distance between the hip and the bottom of the rib cage. So we'll do this tomorrow. I'll uh, anchor this uh, figure down and uh, I'll show you how I do that because this is a true form and I'm not actually giving away any trade secrets. I'm just going to show you how to use the true form armature, which you can get at uh, sculpturedepot.net. Uh, uh, just a P.S. on my video. I was going to try out the uh, monster clay on this uh, figure. I don't think I have enough to do the whole figure, and I got more than enough uh, uh, JMAC clay, which I'm going to use. Um, and it's only because I'm used to JMAC, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted because I'd like to use the JMAC. Maybe what I'll do is try the head and see how it works with that. 
and then go from there. All right. Good night, everybody. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right. See you next time.